Here he is. Our plans for a third jab for the more vulnerable, are they a good idea? Is it not too soon? It, well, it's probably too soon to make a decision, but my instincts are that we're getting a bit carried away with COVID, that we have other illnesses. We, we could have a flu epidemic this winter. We need to think about that. We need to think about the backlog in the NHS, the five to 10 million people on the waiting list, the people with mental health issues, the cancer diagnoses that may have been missed. Uh, I, I'm not convinced that we need a third jab. I have not seen any of my patients who've caught COVID um, catch it again. M the vac if you've had two vaccines, you have a very high level of both T cell immunity and antibodies, which is probably lifelong. And I think we need to know that. I, you would have seen, uh, I, there, was, there was recently a journalist attended the G7 uh, conference who said he caught COVID having been vaccinated twice. But uh, it may well have been the second vaccine wasn't uh, uh, wasn't early enough. So I, I'm not convinced there's a need for a third vaccine. It's going to take up resources, it's going to take up finance. I think, uh, and people got carried away. The power that uh, the authorities, the Public Health England, the Department of Health have got telling people how to live their lives has been extended now. So COVID is just dominating everything. And, uh, and um, we're, we're winning the battle against COVID. It's on the way out. We should all be released from our, our constraints on the 19th of July. Um, and let's think about, you know, whether we need a, a third vaccine. And maybe it can be combined into the flu vaccine, which is what we've done in previous years. We've looked at what vaccines are around and given that a, a combined with the flu vaccine. But please, the, the COVID should not now anymore dominate all of our lives in this way. So would you say then that we need to be looking at the rest of the world and perhaps giving our vaccines out there? Because that's the, people are saying that instead of vaccinating us, we should actually be getting the vaccines out elsewhere. Without a doubt, this is, the, you know, there are countries in the world that are way behind us with their vaccine programme. I think you, you make that comparison. Why, why vaccinate uh, 70 million British people for a third time, or a few less of you who remove children, when there are parts of the world who haven't even had their first vaccine? I think you're right. I think we're, we're overdoing. We've got carried away with the success, and the success is good. Let's face it, we've done very well with our vaccination programme. But that's given power to people and they're using and overusing that power. I know I'm on the receiving end. I have to work with Department of Health every day in terms of our swabbing regime. And the, the paperwork and the bureaucracy is utterly, utterly overwhelming. And I just want all of this uh, per perception of power uh, that ha has now been vested in our government departments. I, I don't blame the cabinet or the prime minister. I actually blame the civil service and the people running things on the ground, they've just got carried away w w with, their, with you know, the, the need to take control of our lives and tell us what we have to do. And that includes having a third vaccine. But I mean, you're, you're talking about the success of the vaccine strategy. We don't actually know how long the vaccine will give us immunity from coronavirus, though. Mm. So why would you at this point be saying we should rule out giving that third jab? Mm. Uh, quite simply because apart from the occasional anecdotal report, uh, you know, I, I based what I say on the front line. I'm on the front line. I see patients with COVID. I will say we've seen a, a handful of cases of COVID now when we went several months without seeing them. So I get a sense of what's going on. None of my patients who've had two jabs has caught COVID, not one. None of my patients who had COVID, including myself, uh, have caught it again. So but there's every I think that the question is, might they get it in six months' time if the vaccine doesn't provide them with long-term immunity? Well, we don't know. We, we now, our lab now has a way of measuring, apart from antibodies, we can measure T-cell immunity. So I think that's what we should be doing. Let's see how long... For, for a lot of virus infections, the immunity is lifelong. But I, I think we need to answer the, the question you're asking. Let's find out how long the immunity lasts before we start doing a mass vaccination program for the, for the third time. And bear in mind, we see occasional side effects of the vaccines. Um, and, you know, people have been getting headaches and unwell for a day or two. I, I just think if you've had two vaccines mm. and you're in generally good health, you've got a good immune system, there's every reason to believe that will protect you 
lifelong. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But let's well, prove Van, it. Let me just give you the words the- of Van Tam, who said, we want to be yeah. on the front foot for COVID-19 booster vaccinations to keep the probability of loss of vaccine protection due to waning immunity or variants as low as possible. You're suggesting wait and see what happens and maybe COVID will then spread amongst those vulnerable groups again if they don't get that third vaccine. And then I'm saying wait the booster let, jab. I'm saying let's do the science. Let's measure T cell immunity, because we can now do that. We, let's measure antibodies. Let's see how long the immunity lasts. Bear in mind, these are the same people that have been warning us every two weeks that a new variant is, go- is going to be resistant to the vaccines. That's not happened. We, it's scare stories, and they, you know, pe- people are using scare stories to control us, to keep us uh, under control, to make sure we we get the two vaccines, which is good, to stop people going out and, and having too many parties. That's another scare story. The idea that people who've had two vaccines could lose their immunity and then catch COVID next winter. There's no evidence that I've seen to suggest that will happen. If you show me evidence, I'll believe it. But I, I, I'm not going to buy into any scare stories that force 40, 50 million of the population to have a third vaccine based on, on, on just speculation. And the same, as I said, the same people who've been speculating all the time about new variants, this variant, that variant that's going to be resistant to the vaccine. It's not happened. We've done well. COVID is now uh, a milder disease in younger people who are not getting the cough and the chest infections. They're very rarely going to hospital. The death rate is very low. The cases we're seeing include positive tests in people who are actually not unwell. So I want to get this whole thing into perspective. Uh, and, you know, as I said, people at Department of Health have become a little bit uh, overconfident with their power.